I'm Dr. Frida. Is caffeine bad for you? Have you ever wondered that? I mean, are you someone who has to have your caffeine fix first thing in the morning to get your day going? Do you love caffeine? If the answer is yes, trust me, you're not alone because caffeine is actually the most commonly used drug worldwide. And yes, it is a drug, it's a stimulant. And the thing is, we believe that caffeine has some beneficial effects, but it has some potentially dangerous effects as well. And so today we're going to answer the question, is caffeine bad for you? Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a medical doctor who has been triple board certified in nephrology, internal medicine, and pediatrics. And today we're going to talk about caffeine. Is caffeine bad for you? So first off, what in the world is caffeine? Well, caffeine is a drug. It's a stimulant. It is the most commonly consumed stimulant worldwide. It's a methylxanthine actually. And in its pure form, caffeine is a white crystalline powder with a bitter taste. And you can find it in different places in nature. You can find it in coffee beans, in tea leaves. You can find it in cocoa beans. You can even find it in the flowers of some citrus plants. So how does caffeine work? Caffeine affects your brain and your body. It affects your central nervous system and other parts of your body as well. So let's start with the central nervous system. Caffeine can work by blocking adenosine receptors. So what in the world does that mean? Well, you have these adenosine receptors in your body. And when adenosine gets to them, then it causes you to relax and maybe even feel a little drowsy, a little sleepy. That's when adenosine gets to them. But what caffeine does is it blocks those adenosine receptors. And so the adenosine can't get to them and it keeps you from being tired. It actually makes you more awake, more alert. And so that is one way that it affects your central nervous system. Adenosine receptors are in other places on your body as well. You have adenosine receptors, specifically the A1 receptors, on your heart and your kidney. So again, when the adenosine is on these receptors in the heart, then it can cause the heart to have a slow heartbeat. But if caffeine gets to these receptors, then you can get a fast heart rate. So caffeine can have that effect of speeding up your heart rate. You may have felt that before. So where else? You have adenosine receptors on your kidneys. And so when you have those adenosine receptors that are taken up by adenosine, you tend to have a bit of a slower or lower urine output. You're not urinating as much. But again, when caffeine gets to those receptors, you tend to urinate more, more frequently. And so you may notice that when you're drinking a lot of caffeine, you're running to the restroom, you're urinating a lot. So these are just some of the effects that caffeine has on your brain and on your body. And it also can affect your muscles as well. Caffeine causes calcium to be released from muscles. So what are some of the benefits of caffeine? Now, I want you to understand that there is not enough data in order to promote or discourage caffeine use. However, there are certain benefits that we do believe you can find from caffeine just in general. One, it can make you more alert, more awake, more focused. We also believe that in some cases it can help with memory, but we're not sure if it's actually helping your memory or if it's just taking away some of the withdrawal symptoms if you have somewhat of an addiction to caffeine. Another possible benefit of caffeine is that in low to moderate doses, it may help to decrease depressive symptoms. And there are some studies that suggest that caffeine may actually be beneficial long-term in certain neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease and dementia. Oh, and caffeine has medicinal purposes as well. Caffeine can be used in premature infants who have difficulty breathing. If they have spells where they stop breathing for short periods of time, apnea of prematurity, then caffeine can actually help. So now let's talk about some of the potentially dangerous side effects, some of the adverse effects or bad effects of caffeine. And remember, there's not enough data in order to promote or discourage the use of caffeine, but we do know that there are definitely some side effects that can affect your health. So is caffeine bad for you? First, remember this, that we believe 
that as long as you are not consuming more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day as an adult, then it likely will not have a lot of adverse effects. For children and adolescents, it's not studied as well, but we believe that if children consume less than 2.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of caffeine, then it's not likely to have bad effects on them either. But kids have to be careful, and adults as well, you don't want to mix caffeine with other substances. Like you don't want teenagers having energy drinks or high caffeine and mixing them with alcohol or other pills, sleeping pills, drugs, substances. So they don't want to mix caffeine. Now, okay, side effects or potentially adverse effects of caffeine. Well, caffeine can have a side effect of restlessness. You can have anxiety that's worsened by caffeine. Also, if you're a person with high blood pressure, caffeine in some cases can exacerbate it or make your blood pressure worse. Caffeine can also cause a jitteriness. Caffeine can also cause a fast heart rate like we talked about. So if you're a person who already has a fast heart rate or tachycardia, especially if you have an abnormal heart rate or you have an arrhythmia, then potentially this fastening or quickening of the heart rate from the caffeine could be a potentially negative side effect for you. And then there's dehydration. I mentioned that caffeine can cause a blocking of the adenosine receptors in the kidney and it can make you urinate more frequently. Well, this can actually cause a dehydration and we know that dehydration can lead to other problems like kidney failure. So dehydration is a potentially negative side effect. You can also develop a tolerance to caffeine where you need more and more. And so I mentioned that we believe that 400 milligrams of caffeine or less we believe that that amount has pretty low potential for causing bad problems. But if you're someone who drinks coffee daily, and if you're drinking 400 milligrams to get that alertness, that focus, that memory sharpness that you want, your body actually may develop a tolerance. So in other words, as the caffeine blocks those adenosine receptors and keeps you awake, well, your body might actually make more adenosine receptors. What does that mean? That in order for caffeine to block those adenosine receptors, it's going to require that you drink more and more coffee or more and more tea or just take in more and more caffeine so you can get a tolerance. And then there's withdrawal. If you become addicted, and yes, you can become addicted to caffeine, then it can lead to caffeine withdrawal. And I'll talk about what that means. So here are some of the caffeine withdrawal symptoms. And remember, if you are a regular consumer of caffeine, if you're having it daily, then if you stop suddenly, you may feel these caffeine withdrawal symptoms. They include headache, fatigue, irritability. You can even get flu-like symptoms just from withdrawal from caffeine. If you're experiencing caffeine withdrawal, you may also struggle to concentrate. These caffeine withdrawal symptoms can last anywhere from a few hours to 24 hours to a few days. And a lot of folks just go ahead and drink themselves some caffeine in order to get over the withdrawal. But it's really an important concept because you really just don't want to be addicted to anything, to rely on a stimulant in order to function. And so it's important that you're aware that caffeine can definitely be addictive. Next, let's talk about some caffeine sources. And remember, we believe that if you're taking in less than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day, then you're not likely to have a lot of harmful effects. And again, for adolescents and teens, we're not sure. We believe that 2.5 milligrams per kilogram per day or less for adolescents and teens should be okay. Do know that it is possible to have toxicity from caffeine to overdose, but that would take 10 grams of caffeine. We're talking 10,000 milligrams of caffeine. So not likely, but yes, there is a such thing as caffeine toxicity. All right, now let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about how much caffeine is in the, the foods and the drinks that we take in each day. So let's talk about tea. So here we have an Arizona green tea. Mm -hmm. And for this entire can of tea, it's just over 11 milligrams of caffeine. All right, so that's not too bad. And then we have the Arizona Mucho Mango Tea, Mucho Mango. And now they're actually making this tea with no caffeine, but there was a time where you could get it and it would have 120 milligrams of caffeine. So just make sure you're watching your labels. And then we have Peace Tea. Don't we all need peace? Who doesn't want peace? For this entire can, over 20 ounces of Peace Tea, there's only 23 milligrams of caffeine. Ooh, now let's talk about chocolate, the chocolate. 
Now y'all know that chocolate does have caffeine. And if you're looking at your typical chocolate bar, your milk chocolate bar, it's going to have about eight milligrams of caffeine in it. And if you just kind of break it down as in an ounce of milk chocolate, we're looking at about 3.5 milligrams of caffeine per ounce of milk chocolate. Now dark chocolate has a little bit more, a higher caffeine concentration. An ounce of dark chocolate has about 13.3 milligrams of caffeine. And then I know y'all know what these are. Uh oh, these are uh, chocolate covered espresso beans, chocolate covered espresso beans. Now, if you have ever been in a situation where you have to be up all night studying or if you're working a night shift or you need to stay awake, you may or may not have had oh, lost one of my beans. You may or may not have had a chocolate covered espresso bean. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of caffeine in these beans, a lot of ounce per ounce. Just one ounce of these chocolate covered espresso beans has 230 milligrams of caffeine. And so again, everything in moderation, but you really want to be mindful of how much caffeine you're taking in when you're doing these espresso beans. Now, let's talk about the tea and the coffee. Now in this tea, this little tea bag here, where I have about 230 milliliters of water for my tea, this is a nice little green tea and it will have between 30 and 40 milligrams of caffeine, this one serving of tea. And then coffee, y'all all know about the coffee. Coffee is tricky because it's really going to vary depending on what kind of coffee you have, how it's brewed, where it comes from, the coffee beans. Coffee can vary anywhere from 65 to about 300 milligrams of caffeine. And so that's kind of the wild card, the coffee. You really have to pay attention to how many cups of coffee you're drinking and, and pay attention to where you're getting it from. Energy drinks, these caffeine filled drinks that many people take in to try to stay alert, stay focused, pay attention because if you're not careful, you can really go over that daily limit of caffeine. So let's look at this one, Red Bull. I know y'all heard about Red Bull and Red Bull giving you wings, but in this 12 ounces of Red Bull, you get 114 milligrams of caffeine. And then you have Monster Juice. Monster, that just sounds scary, doesn't it? Monster Juice. In this one can of monster juice, you have 160 milligrams of caffeine. And now C4 energy, this is nice and bright. Just looking at this gives you energy, does it? Yeah, it kind of looks energetic. But in this one can of C4 energy, you have 200 milligrams of caffeine. And then bang, this one is called bang, honey. In this one can of bang, you have 300 milligrams of caffeine. So these are just some of the examples reminding you to be careful label watchers because there are foods that you eat, things that you drink that have caffeine, and you must be aware of what you're putting in your bodies. Okay, so what's the answer to the question? Is caffeine bad for you? Well, there is no black and white, right or wrong answer. Remember, we don't have enough scientific data to either promote or discourage the use of caffeine. What we do know is, as I mentioned, there are certain dangerous effects, potentially there are certain side effects and you just must be aware of them. On the same note, there are some potential benefits. It is important that you consult your physician to find out how much caffeine is going to be safe for you. The general rule is less than 400 milligrams a day for adults, but again, consult your physician. Caffeine is the most widely consumed stimulant in the world. And so this definitely affects a lot of people. We have over 150 million Americans who consume coffee daily. So next time you pick up your cup of coffee or your cup of tea, or you're grabbing that energy drink, just really be cognizant. Think about how much caffeine you're taking in and make sure you do things in moderation in a safe level. And while you're getting those benefits like being alert, being awake, trying not to be sleepy, trying to focus, trying to do things in a more efficient way, think about the potential dangerous effects as well, like developing tolerance or getting withdrawal symptoms or having a fast heart rate or dehydrating yourself, things of that nature. Everything in life is a balance. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please like this video and share it with the people you care about. Also, if you're not doing so already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Dr.Frida and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button so you'll be among the first to know when I release new medical content. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching and I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida. My fingernail's broken, but you know what? I'm gonna stop trying to hide it and just talk with a broken fingernail because that's life. Hey, cool.
it's okay for a video to be less than 10 minutes. And if you include bloopers, it might be over 10 minutes. You're good. Carmen, great. Good girl. These are my niece's pit bulls, honey. Okay. I'm Dr. Frida.